So actually, when did you started your coding, bro? I mean, like I started coding when I was in the ninth standard. Like, <laughs> I started coding things like HTML and mm-hmm. things like those. So I wasn't really coding anything. So from where you have learned all these languages? So starting with my third semester, I really, I really started doing a lot of courses on. So while you were in college, uh, like what kind of projects you have done? Yeah, initially some sort of projects I might have done, but all of them. So you have said previously you worked at uh, for internship. Like uh, have you done any internship or any other job? Like uh, previously have you done any internships? The one, the only major internship was I had this training at. What is the roadmap you suggest for the beginners who are just entering into coding? I think the answer to that question would be like, you know, there's no, there's no one roadmap. This, these are the things that work for me. So, what is the selection process at Amazon? I mean, the role that I joined at Amazon was the very entry level one, which was. Like, do you want to share any of your interview experience with the audience? The first thing is to get your resume sorted. Yeah, how was the work life at Amazon? You are obviously expected to work. So uh, there, there will be work always. You can do it. Like it's not a lot, very less. I mean, it depends on the days as well. Okay. So is there any chance you can reveal your income, like your salary? Yeah. So I think my current biggest pay is. So in these days, students who are taking engineering as their career. So most of the students are opting for computer science and engineering. So at the time of their graduation, most of the students want to place in a very good company. So as a fresher, most of the students want to place in a product-based company. In this video, I'm going to do an interview with one of my seniors from Central University of Karnataka, Sudan Shubaya, where he got a job offer in a product-based company. That too, he got an international offer from a three-tier university. So the company he is working right now is Amazon Dublin. So in this interview, we will know about his entire journey from day one of college till today. So basically, this interview is divided into two parts. So in part one, we will know about his coding journey, his projects, as well as his internships. So in part two, we will know about his interview process as well as his work life at Amazon. So guys, if you are someone who are planning to join in product based company, please watch this part one as well as part two. So without any further ado, we will dive into the interview. So hi bro, how are you? Yeah, I am also fine. So uh, I would like to thank you so much because uh, I know you are working in Amazon Dublin. I know you have a very tight schedule. So you have given us some of your valuable time. Thank you so much. So I know a little bit about yourself, but my audience don't know about you. So can you please introduce yourself? Hey folks, hey, hey viewers of Joshua's channel. I'm Sudhan Shu. And as you mentioned, I was a senior at Central University of Karnataka. I did my integrated tech in computer science of engineering at Central University of Karnataka, and I graduated in 2022. And then once I was done with my graduation, I I have been working as a software developer at AWS in Dublin since September of 2022. So actually, when did you started your coding, bro? And like I started coding when I was in my ninth standard, but oh. I started coding things like HTML and yeah, things like those. So I wasn't really coding anything. Uh-huh. That was just my school mm-hmm. syllabus. In 11th standard as well, I just continued with computer science. So then I did learn some C++ and stuff like those. Yeah. Are you from uh, CBSE board? Yeah, I, I, I did complete oh. my 10th and 12th from CBSE. But yeah, I, I really started coding when I was in, as I said, in my third semester, I picked up this course that was when I got introduced to Python and then mm-hmm. I really picked it up for problem solving and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So I start, I think one of the initial platforms that I, that I started coding on was Hacker. Right? Okay. I, I started just solving problems and things like those. That, 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 that's what I did. So I, I solved problems using okay. Python. I used Python everywhere for projects, for problem solving everywhere. So from the beginning, you have learned CSS, HTML, C++ as well as Python. So from where you have learned all these languages, like only from your like textbooks or only from your professor PPTs, if you took any other online courses or from any other websites. So what are the resources you have used for learning these languages? So HTML, CSS and C++, I wouldn't really count on them as I learned them a lot. Like I obviously learned whatever I was taught in my 
labs and in my syllabus and my book so starting with my third semester i really i really started doing a lot of courses on np tel basically that was the time when i started doing some python and stuff like that third semester was the beginning where i started things like artificial intelligence the joy of computing using python all these courses on np tel and then pretty much it was you know as as you keep going on as you keep practicing stuff you get to learn a lot so there must be a lot of internet resources that i have gone through like uh, like uh, is there any websites specific websites to learn python i would say like start practicing on maybe hacker rank it it's quite user friendly at least okay. beginner friendly yeah obviously there's this website called geeks for geeks which has probably everything the most important skill is google it like whatever okay. problem you face you should know how to find an answer for that on okay. google so just read through things you know read through websites stack overflow is nice geeks for geeks is nice if you just keep doing it i think yeah as we like doing more and more coding we will get to know about all this stuff exactly so so at some point yeah exactly uh, that's what i was going to say at some point you would start referring the documentation of these actual things rather than using some third party resources to find yeah, out yeah. oh how can i do this stuff while you are practicing like uh, how many hours did you practice coding that's an interesting question as well because to be honest i can't give you a number from the top of my head it it obviously varied from day to day so okay. obviously there were times when i would spend a lot of time okay. doing things and then okay. there would be days when i didn't do anything at the initial stage like uh, how many hours did you practice coding i, I wouldn't say like more than 2 hours 2 to 4 hours would be a good guess so at your initial coding you have like uh, started coding in uh, c++ as well as python like uh, have you upgraded to any other languages or you are still stick to python only so for problem solving i still don't ch- change from python python is a language that okay. i love but yeah obviously when you start a job you have to do things whatever is needed from you uh, python isn't the the language i use at my job more of like I use TypeScript a lot, and then I use Java, and then I use some Python for automation and stuff like that. Like uh, we have like so many rest of the languages. So why did you specifically choose Python? At some point, I got introduced to Python. Yeah, Python is very yeah, I guess user friendly, very mm-hmm. beginner friendly. I mean, it's one of the languages I would recommend anyone who doesn't know how to code. as well as it also have some built in libraries which will be helpful for beginners also i think exactly so i mean it has basically everything and yeah. obviously i my area of interest back in college was machine learning and artificial intelligence and stuff like that so okay. python was the language for that okay. so i didn't start with python for software development i started with it for machine learning ai and stuff like that So like to can you please elaborate like uh, in a brief way uh, from first year of college to like uh, you are integrated mtech so can you please like elaborate your coding journey from first year to fifth year so first year as i said no coding third semester came in obviously the branches got separate so okay. we were starting with more computer science stuff i took up these courses from nptel got introduced to python this was when i got introduced to python so my coding journey other than whatever i was in the college itself was like solving problems on hacker rank and stuff like that i mean in my third and fourth semester i just continued doing hacker rank and then maybe in my fifth and sixth semester i started doing stuff towards towards machine learning and ai and things like those so that's when i actually okay. started to get to understand python a lot more like and then obviously covid enters our lives i guess in i think this is in 2020 some point in 2020 i was in my sixth semester we all come back to our homes and yeah now i have a lot of time available to myself like i have my, okay. I have my entire days to myself and okay. i started doing things like so this is the point where i started taking up stuff other than python and ml itself as well i got introduced to this development stack called mod stack which you could use to build web apps and things like those 
so yeah i did a couple of projects there like just followed youtube videos whatever they coded i coded the same you you follow the same video like three hours video becomes a 30 hours video because obviously you cannot complete yeah. that in three hours yeah but if, if you invest that time obviously you keep on building on you, you keep building on your portfolios and like you have these projects that you really know about so yeah sixth semester ends third year ends i'm doing this thing in seventh and eighth semester maybe i'm building these things web apps i'm also i'm pretty sure i'm also continuing with my problem solving skills on python or or maybe i gave it a pause and just switched on the projects side of things towards the end of eighth semester i did get an internship at digilocker okay. which was more or less like they were migrating their apis to python plus plus is a very famous framework for building web apps or apis in okay. python okay. so yeah that was the time i got introduced to python for software development so I obviously knew Python as machine learning and things like those. Mm-hmm. But this is when I learned Python for software development. I did some stuff there, basic stuff. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't even do a lot of coding there. I just did some documentation and stuff there. Mm-hmm. But after that, I got a job offer from IIT Madras online degree program. So okay. there's this program similar to NPTEL, mm-hmm. which is called IIT Madras online yeah. degree yeah, project online or something. Degree. DigiLocker was a nice break as well, but but that was my first large break, the IIT Madras online degree project. That was obviously also built on Flask okay. and Python. I just went ahead and it okay. was entirely Python until the end of my college life. And then I got this job okay. offer. So, I mean, that that's my coding journey okay. throughout my college life. So, while you were in college, uh, like what kind of projects you have done? Okay, that's... That's a nice question. Yeah, initially, some fair amount of projects, I might not even remember all of them, but I'm pretty sure that I pushed all of them on my GitHub repository. Yeah, I mean, project doing stuff really started when COVID happened. So I think I had this internship, free internship kind of thing, or like this free training kind of thing by Career Launcher, where they had a project for stock market. That was some project I did, like that was, I'm not sure if I could call that a project, but yeah, like it had some, we need to do some things like uh, training models and fitting models, blah, 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 whatever machine learning stuff, and then use it for different tasks like prediction and blah, blah, blah. But okay. yeah, that was one of the things that I started with, but okay. I, I mean, I immediately started doing a lot more projects when I got introduced to Merl, which is like, I, I think I built a clone of a lot of things. I, I think I did Netflix clone and I'm not sure if I did a WhatsApp clone, blah, blah, blah. Uh, there's a YouTube channel called Clever Programmer. Okay. They really did a lot of stuff back then. So okay. these modern web apps, like they okay. they just built, how, how do you build a Netflix or how do you build? So that that's okay. something that I did. So that must be a couple of projects as well. Obviously, since COVID was the topic that time, there was a COVID tracker as well. Okay. That must be on my GitHub profile as well. Obviously, I got introduced to Flask, Web App, and Python. So during my internship at DigiLocker, I got introduced to Flask. So one of the qualifying tasks for my job at IIT Madras was that I had to build a music application okay. on Flask. So that that's something I did. And then at the end of my college, I did a project with blockchain and things like those. So there was a, blo- a web application based on blockchain. And then there were other web applications. I remember web application was a very simple ham spam classifier. So it's a base, it's a very basic classifier that classifies a mail, okay. if it's a ham or a spam. So okay. again, this was a, a Python and plus project as well. So okay. yeah, I, I think I did quite some projects. And okay, so you have touched like a web development, you have touched artificial intelligence and you have also touched a bit uh, like blockchain technology so you have touched uh, all of the areas i kind of did yeah so from the couple of minutes you were saying about uh, like uh, mon development and uh, web app and uh, as well as flask these are the languages or are the frameworks so flask is a framework on okay. python that okay. you could use to build web applications and apis okay. similar with mon mon is more or less like mongo express react 
and Node. These are okay. all frameworks for JavaScript, we... and you could use those to build like a backend and a frontend and things okay. like that. So React is frontend, Mongo is a database thing, Node Not is basically backend. backend, and Express is backend as well. So both of those are just web application. Okay. So you have said previously you worked at a, a DigiLocker for internship. Like, uh, have you done only that single internship, or previously have you done any internships? So, if you done any internships, what kind of uh, projects you have done in that internships? The one, the only major internship was the DigiLocker one. I had this training at Career Launcher that I mentioned, but it wasn't okay. really an internship kind of thing. Okay. And then, and then other than that, uh, I mean there was one time during covid where where we could not do internships and then okay. our course era courses worked back then so yeah. i had some android applications built back then like i built a simple calculator there was a course on course era that uh, you could do for building android applications and okay. i think i did that so yeah okay. the, the only one internship that i really did was, was DigiLocker. digilocker one okay. there was one internship that i came very close to getting but i didn't get it it was okay. java and spring and i didn't know i didn't know it back then okay. there was one other instance where i had this internship about a health application okay. i think i started with it but got lost kind of in the between so yeah digilocker was the only real internship that i did so uh, like uh, in coding journey data structures and algorithms are really really important uh, have you learned dsa so if yes like uh, when did you learn in dsa it is Important, yeah, really, really, really important. I'm not sure about that. I mean, it is, it is, very, it is important. I would say it's important. Depends, you know, how much, how much is the okay. job expecting you to be good at it. I mean, you could, you need to know the basics for sure. Okay. How advanced you have to become, and it depends on different categories of jobs. Okay. But yeah, so for data structure and algorithms, as I said, I mean, I'm pretty sure there must be some course in some year of my college i think i think in my second semester there was this called this thing called programming and data structures maybe that was it yeah again in my not in my third semester i think in my fourth semester i i had this nptl course okay. uh, that was pdsa with python so programming data structures and algorithms in okay. python okay. which is again on nptl and this is again by a great professor by the name r madhavan and there was one other course by him, which is called design and analysis of algorithms. Okay. I did both of them teach you, they did, they did teach me a lot of things. I mean, if you okay. go through those courses, they, they are pretty, pretty well designed courses and you do learn a lot of things. But yeah, okay. after that, it's just about you and the amount of practice you put in. So, so as you said, you have worked in a, like a, IIT Madras BSA online BSA degree program. So while working in IIT Madras online degree program, what was your role? Officially, it's called project associate or something. Okay. I, I don't remember the I don't remember the official name of the role now. The role basically is that of backend developer. Okay. So you have to build in Flask. So you have to build features in Flask. And well, the one thing about Flask is it's not just backend it can also be used as frontend okay. like you can get to do some coding and stuff too you can get to add some templates and stuff which would yeah. be in jinja okay. i think that's pretty close to html and that can render websites okay. for you i think dynamic websites for you okay. so yeah that that's pretty much what we were supposed to do so it madras okay. has this student dashboard like it madras online degree program as the student dashboard side of things okay. where you could go in to check the initial login and yeah, yeah, yeah. the initial login and the student dashboard that you see about the courses yeah. you are enrolled in the courses that you'll yeah, be yeah. qualifying for future huh. and the courses that you can register basically the registration forms yeah. where you can choose the next choose the courses for the next semester and things like those okay. so yeah that that was us we handled those but the videos itself was handled by a different team. So for the development side, uh, like you people has handled. Yeah, we, we handled the entire. I mean, it was me and one other backend developer. Okay. And then there was a front end developer. Yeah, these three were the people who kind okay. of maintained that entire project. And at some point, oh. the front end developer 
okay. left so it was just us okay. who kind of owned the entire project end to end like add features and whatever blah blah, blah. and so, then we had a uh, senior senior like we had a team lead as well i okay. could say so okay. who supervised the development of things and and uh, i think he he contributed to development at times as well so while you were in college you mainly focused on python and uh, for web applications like uh, you have mainly focused on uh, like mon as well as flask as well as you are saying like web app so apart from this have you focused or have you learned any other languages or any other frameworks i don't remember there was a framework for javascript back then which you could okay. also use to build android apps other than that yeah i, I can't remember of a lot of things that i did to be honest so there okay. were some android applications that i built which was again a different thing okay. like they had all sort of things like flutter and then there was a native android development stuff so mon and flask clearly stand out for the web apps that i did i didn't what is the road map you suggest for the beginners who are just entering into coding i think the answer to that question would be like you know there's not there's no one road map like this these are the things that work for me there could be different things that has worked for different people okay like you can say about python yeah, i'll i'll guide you through the path that okay. i did so started doing something like in got introduced to algorithms data structures python on npt al started doing some uh, problem solving with python on different pra- platforms like hackerlang codechef okay. so you can obviously go to those those platforms to okay. get some problem problems solving. and solve them obviously did some machine learning projects in python okay. did some web app development projects okay. in python okay. so since i did my nptel the initial nptel courses got me visibility for my job at iit madras in fact that was the reason why i was reached out okay. to for a job yeah basically every everything just fell into place after that like you keep doing some stuff everything sort of starts falling into its place so okay. you you can really know what you are doing is kind of correct and this will take you to your desired outcome but the thing okay. is you have to do it anyways and then i would say the one thing that really helps is like having faith faith in something that's greater than you for me it was shidam but for okay. others it could be anyone anything i mean whatever gives you motivation like to un- to, to think that you are solely responsible for whatever okay. you do is, is okay. i think is dumb you cannot do everything by your own you obviously need some okay. sort of force from outside to get the stuff done so that's kind of the road map have faith you know do do keep doing your stuff and so by uh, apart from amazon have you applied to any other companies i i must have i don't remember but i i think i did yeah i did apply to quite some companies okay. some in india as well and some outside as well i'm not okay. sure if i got any real interviews from them but okay yeah i must uh, i mean i i would be lying if i said i didn't i, I apply to a lot of places so what is the selection process at amazon If you look into the Google, we have like uh, eight to nine rounds of uh, like a uh, selection process. Like uh, how many rounds actually is there at Amazon? So what actually the selection process from starting to up to selection? I mean, the role that I joined at Amazon was the very entry level one, which was a SD grad role. It okay. was like only open to graduates, like to okay. fresh graduates okay. in 2022. So the interview. process for these sd grads are very okay. streamlined and standard i think across industry for okay. for amazon it was more or less like a coding round where you have a couple of questions okay you do you complete your coding round based okay. based on your coding round you okay. get reached out for an interview okay. for an on site interview which is basically online these days okay. and this interview consists of three rounds now all these three rounds for a grad has the same template where for the initial 30 minutes or some time they give you a problem okay. you have to attempt okay. to solve that problem within the okay. first 30 minutes or so or, or or i mean the order could be different the other 30 minutes is for behavioral questions 
which okay. is basically oriented on, around Amazon's leadership principles. So they have questions related to your past experience and things like that. And they, okay. they obviously understand that you are applying to a grad role. So you are not expected to have a lot of experience before that. But okay. whatever experience you have from your from the projects that you did okay. or from the internships that you had. Okay. In my case, it was I had a job, so I had quite some quite some times that okay. I could use as answers to this question. So, okay. so yeah, so all these three rounds, each one are long, have okay. a problem a uh, behavioral it. section. After completing these three rounds, well, uh, I don't know the internal details. Maybe you get selected directly. Maybe you are put on a wait, wait list. I'm not okay. sure how in how hiring works internally, but the okay. next thing for you is you get reached out via a recruiter who okay. says, Hey, you have passed the interviews. Here's the details of the offer that you can get. If you are interested in this, okay. just let us know within the next seven days. So that that's okay. how it went for me. So okay. I completed my interviews and then at some point within the next few weeks, okay. I got reached out by, by a recruiter. And if you were interested in the offer, you okay. get the offer. Kind of, it's it. okay. so it is basically like a one coding round, and uh, we have three rounds on on site. So we have basically four rounds. So we don't have like any written test or any HR round. A coding round and an aptitude round. It's not written, but it's like multi choice question kind of thing. Okay. So the virtual there's let's call it the virtual round and the on site round. Okay. So the virtual round also has two sections. One is the online coding round which okay. has two questions and you have to solve those two questions within time period of two hours or three hours. I don't remember. Okay. I think it's two hours. Okay. And then there's this behavioral section where you are expected to answer some questions in like likely, not likely kind of scale from zero to five okay. and things like those. Yeah, that's that's again around two hours. And I think I, I remember it being very long so basically we have five rounds uh, for selection in amazon yeah i mean basically two but the virtual round is divided into two sections coding and okay. behavioral and then the on-site is obviously three rounds so on-site is like uh, like it is for everybody like uh, who is also like uh, doing job in india or it is it is like for the students who want to do like job at abroad i i can only tell you about my process in AWS Dublin, but I, I would say I would say it's more or less similar for like SDE a, grad hires everywhere. The the level of question they ask, the level of problem solving they expect from you might be different okay. based on different countries. But okay. yeah, I, th I think that that's I, I would expect that to be the kind of procedure that would be applicable for all the countries. For my case, it was Dublin or Luxembourg. I don't even remember because I applied to both of these places. I'm not sure. I think Amazon has just one standardized application for all SD grad hires. So even if I applied for something in India, which I don't think India had ISD grad hire role back then, that's why I must not have applied to it. So yeah, I think the SD grad hire is a very standardized process for everywhere in AWS. And I think this is the same for every company, but the onsite round, obviously, depending upon the location you might be getting, they might be having a different level of questions for you. I think there was one way for India though. The, back then there was a competition organized by Amazon called Amazon Hackon, which was again a coding round. It had like three coding questions and you were expected to do it. And then it had this opportunity to work at Amazon for the top 100 participants in that competition. So I, I think I did it and I was also in that list, but they never reached out to me because at some point in 2022 recession really hit and then okay. they were like, we won't hire okay. through this way this time. But yeah, I did. I did get some cool gifts. So I, I'm not sure if it's still going on, but if it's going on, maybe that is that's something nice to participate. On. Uh, like uh, you have joined in Amazon like in 2022, right? The yeah. September of 2022. So like, do you remember like what kind of questions have you asked in interview as well as in coding? 
or like uh, what kind of questions one student can expect from interview or in terms of coding i would say for again uh, as i said it depends maybe okay. the virtual coding round is standard for every sta- like has the same standards everywhere some basic questions related to graph or to be honest i don't remember the questions they asked maybe a linked list or something like that string okay. patterns matching blah blah, blah. Uh, okay. i mean some string formatting functions and things like those for my on set interviews it was something the first round was very simple i remember it being simple so okay. i would say it was something related to string okay. or a linked list that i don't okay. remember the okay. second round was simple as well but okay. it had to do with some 2d matrix 2d array so a matrix okay. manipulation stuff like that priority queue there's a concept called priority queue okay. which i'm not sure that i mean you can expect questions like these okay. in your coding round or something like those okay. and then the third round was actually i remember the question quite clearly because i didn't do very well in the okay. third one which was like you were expected to kind of build something like a search so every okay. time you hit a single a, a key you'll have to return the search results for that key so kind of an auto search suggestion okay. is kind of how auto search suggestions were okay. on amazon websites and things like those so okay. obviously i did i implemented the brute force way of it yeah i did ideal solution could be using a try which i couldn't implement it back then but okay. i think more or less they see how good you are at knowing what you are trying to implement so okay. he really asked me what do you think the time complexity of the solution is and then i was like find the time complexity of each of these steps and okay. you give them then give with them the final time complexity and that that's okay. what they basically judge you on how fluent you are with things like those and obviously it's also i guess kind of luck i mean no. um, depending on how many people they are really hiring that year so 2022 okay. was a great hiring year and then recession hit during that year and then 2023 was not a great year for hiring grad okay. students i yeah. think they are hiring 2024 grads but i'm not sure how much on what scale like do you want to share any of your interview experience with the audience like do you want to share like some of the stuff with our audience try to get as many interviews as you can yeah this is we have a lot of mock interviews as well exactly so yeah. the first thing is to get your resume sorted that like the entry bar i guess is quite high if if your resume doesn't get shortlisted then okay. there's no point in you being a great great developer prospect or something like that i mean a resume that you know that can obviously be accepted by these automated trackers or hrs try to have your resume that way i'm not sure if i'm the right guy to suggest to on how a resume should look i think there are platforms like those so okay yeah you feel you use those for sure okay. try to get as many interviews as you can and each of these interviews you become a bit better at going into at, these uh, interviews go in confident can, have yeah better at communication as well exactly so as as much as you practice like the interview part is as much as you feel yeah. okay with giving an interview the better okay. you become yeah be confident i uh, be very be very vocal with your okay. thought process even if you are at doubt that something wrong might come out of your mouth okay. just go ahead and say it. they are not okay. I, i don't think they are judging you for that just okay. just say it. just explain whatever you are thinking try to write it some nice code obviously you will write some ugly code at times but that's okay, okay. they are there for that they are there to help you so the important skill for an interview i would say is being very vocal being very vocal about whatever's going in your head so just okay. explain them your thought process okay. just make sure they understand it ask questions ask clarifying questions if you don't understand any of okay. the part and th- okay. those things so basically be good at communication yeah, so, and and give yeah. loads of interviews so from your interview experience like what is the panel expect from a student who are applying for the job interviewer really wants to understand okay. your thought process your approach to solve okay. a problem and things like how, how how you fix something when you encounter an issue like if you are aware about the edge cases and if you are taking that into consideration or not and 
if you know the efficiency of the code you write or not and things like those so amazon has this interview or courses that okay. makes you an interviewer i didn't really do that so i don't know really what goes inside the head of an interviewer okay. i might better answer that question sometime i really okay. start interviewing at amazon as well yeah the, I, i i would expect them to judge me on those things and then obviously the quality of code okay. i produce in my first okay. attempt or or you know and and how clear i am with communication communication is the most yeah. important part of all of it if you are good at communicating stuff what are the things like uh, one student how to focus uh, for applying product based company interviews like what are the main things they have to focus okay. you should be very very keen on keen about these opportunities i mean you should be there whenever these opportunities come up and i mean you cannot be late you cannot delay these things i would say delaying these is kind of the worst thing that you could do to yourself like i mean as long as you'll keep delegating it you you are not doing yourself a favor so obviously whenever things like those come your way Okay. just go ahead and like apply for those opportunities be like yeah i'm prepared for it i mean you can go like okay i think i'm not prepared so i won't be applying to it okay. i don't think they really care i mean you can just apply prepare during that time like you don't get your interviews as soon as you apply so there is no right time to apply okay so just go ahead and apply i mean so apply to like as many as companies possible and start giving it and as fast as you can like delaying your application process okay. does okay. you no good and obviously okay. other than that as i mentioned okay. in the last part of my video which was like not everything is under your control you can only do okay. so much so okay yeah other than that you have to leave it in the hands of someone greater than you i i did my part and then someone greater than you does that that that's it so like uh, what is your role at amazon and what what actually you do at amazon do so yeah i am a software development engineer okay. at aws in dublin yeah basically what i work in is a org called cloudwatch so if you open your aws console if you have an aws account and open your aws console okay. there is a solution which gives you the monitoring over your web services basically okay so we we call it cloud watch which okay. is literally an observability solution for your cloud okay. and within cloud watch i belong to the metrics side of things so okay. there's there's a section of metrics within cloud watch which is basically okay. a time series time series database and you can like graph things like those like you can graph your latencies and things like those like basically a graph solution and okay within metrics i or my team is responsible for like providing the search functionality of these metrics like these metrics have some characteristics called metric name namespace dimension stuff like that and you could like search these metrics on the basis of these characteristics and yeah we we serve that functionality of search on the console and we offer an external api called list metrics okay so yeah that that's that's basically how we yeah support search of the metrics okay so product based company is mainly about infrastructure so as we look into like a uh, product based companies in india also so the infrastructure is really good so how was the infrastructure at uh, amazon dublin so so the office is pretty basic you know like you have mm. this work benches and yours you have i mean we we follow a agile workplace where you don't okay. have assigned okay. desktops okay. assigned desks and things like those but yeah. you know which team sets where and then within each team you have a certain sets of desks and then you you know your you basically it's a force of habit that you have to sit on that desk so agile okay. is not really agile it, you okay. are going to the office on a okay. daily basis but yeah so basically it has one of the leadership principles as frugality so which basically says being cost effective that does not mean that we don't have gaming areas we do have gaming areas we do have cafeterias 
we do have kitchenettes on each of these floors and then obviously there's the coffee machine for developers which you could like get coffee from throughout the day but yeah no swimming pools no gyms at least at the office that i am at it's not there i mean it might be at other amazon offices or else it's not there so and and i i don't really go to gyms i mean <laughs> yeah how was the work life at amazon you are obviously expected to work so <laughs> uh, there there will be work always yeah. you can do it like it's not a lot very less i mean it depends on the days as well like there can okay. be days where you don't have a lot of work there okay. can be days where you are like where you have okay. a lot going on your plate but i think that's just very standard with every company okay uh, i mean at amazon specifically speaking at my team okay. i don't find it like it has a consistent pattern of too much work or too less work it's always it's okay. kind of a graph that keeps going up down Okay, and okay. it's mostly a very balanced amount of work okay. but at times it can be when you are supposed to complete a feature complete a project you have a strict okay. deadline you are obviously running against clock then you are expected okay. to work over time or when you are going to mitigate something very serious with your systems you are expected okay. to work fast you are expected to work more but in general times it's you are expected to just work yeah. and they have no restrictions on the time when you come to the office the time you leave the office okay. so that's all you okay the work life balance is quite okay you can okay. once you're done with your work you can just okay. get going with your life and okay so is there any chance you can reveal your income like your salary yeah so i think my current base pay is around 75000 euros okay. and 75000 so, euros yeah um, and like have, per year yeah that, that's per year and this is like this is before taxes not sure how much and then obviously there's some bonus components that you get and things like those so like signing bonus okay spread over two years and things like those and then we have our on call rotations we get paid for off hours on call rotations okay. so yeah i mean i think everything combined it comes roughly around 4k to 5k anywhere between that 4000 5000 euros okay. and a month okay. so uh, i mean it can, it can be anywhere between that i think 5000 is a bit towards higher end i i would say okay. 4 to 4.5k okay. a month okay uh, like someone who are just recently joined in amazon so what kind of salaries one can expect from amazon so i think this is the pretty basic one that okay. you could expect like this is for for a grad role for an entry level grad role this okay. is the salary that okay. you could expect like, to be uh, getting do you have any idea about uh, indian salaries i unfortunately don't but i i think it should be pretty great as well like i think there should be something like 16 lpa to 18 lpa as a base component and then there should be some stocks but i i have no idea I have no idea about how it's in India. So, as you working in Amazon, so you have almost two years of experience. Do you feel like uh, does Amazon will help you grow in your career? So, at Amazon or I think at any other big tech, you obviously yeah. get to learn a lot. Everything you do, you would constantly feel that you learn a lot. Beneficial it is for you in the world outside Amazon. I I can't really quantify that, but I, okay. I do get to learn. Uh, not we have a lot of internal tools and things like those there's no boundary to the amount of things okay. you could learn and i think okay. in general in engineering that that's what's important i mean okay look uh, like uh, why do you choose dublin instead of india so is there any specific reason there is none other than that i didn't apply for anything in india or maybe i did apply for an positions in india but didn't hear back from them so as i okay. said i was applying everywhere okay. but i never heard back from india so okay. it it really boils down to locations what actively hiring back then when i was okay. looking for a job i think dublin okay. was one of the locations that was like really actively hiring when i was looking okay. for a job and okay. yeah i i had no intention of 
moving outside of India when okay. I got this job. But I mean, okay. now I do suggest that if if you if you get a chance to apply for a job within and outside of India, I would okay. say you you should at least once in your lifetime like try and experience things outside yeah. of India. Try to move out for a bit, and then if your plan is to come back, just come back. It doesn't really matter. So apart from Amazon, what are the like other product based companies one student can apply? Uh, so those companies which will pay good amount of salaries. The more popularly known as like the companies that are called Fang. So Fang. Th- those are uh-huh. obviously the well known ones. Yeah. Which is now Mang, I guess. Okay. So Meta, yeah. Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google. Yeah. And then obviously I would also include Microsoft. There, yeah. I I don't think it pays you a lot less. I mean, yeah, for sure it could pay you a bit less, but yeah, I think that's a great place to work as well. And yeah. it is a product based company. Other than these, I I guess there are companies like yeah. Stripe is more popular in Dublin and the states. So yeah, there's Stripe, Uber. I think I think a lot of companies basically the yeah. company. That was involved with the that had a fiasco a couple of days ago. CrowdStrike, yeah. if, if anything, I mean, I think there are a lot of a lot of companies product-based there. companies out there, yeah. and there yeah. there is no boundary to the amount of companies out there look that have opportunities for people. So yeah, you just have to be looking for it. So, like, uh, any tips you want to share with our audience or someone who are just entering into coding? I would say, yeah, practice things, practice a lot, and obviously, as for the interviews part, as I recommend, like try and attend a lot of interviews, like try to get a lot of interviews, attend yeah. those interviews just for the sake of learning things. You have a lot of time during your college, and I think that changes when you get a job. You yeah. don't have so yeah. much, and uh, just like be quick your with your application process and things like those that that should be pretty much it and then the last part is always you know you have to be lucky okay. there's always quite some luck involved so yeah just don't take it upon yourself when yeah. you're getting rejected and things like that i mean it happens to all of us you'll obviously get rejected a lot yeah. and then you'll get accepted to this one place which would be awesome so i mean Take life as it goes. So just focus on yourself. Keep on improving yourself. Just put yourself out there. Yeah, th- those are the things. So you yeah. know, don't be ashamed of getting visibility for anything you do. Just just put it out there for the world to see. Even if it's like basic thing, just put it out there. I think oh. just by putting it out there, you are doing better than a lot of people. So is there any chance like uh, our audience, or the viewers, uh, like who are watching this video, can contact you? Like, is there any way, like uh, LinkedIn or any social media handles? I think yeah, LinkedIn could be one of them. Basically, LinkedIn. I mean, I I, I think I don't have I am not very active anywhere else. Yeah, LinkedIn would be one of the places where okay. you could really drop me a message about the things you would okay. like. About referrals and things like those, if you have, if you are interested in a job opportunity at Amazon and things like those, so okay. yeah, I could probably help you with those. So guys, I will provide the Sudan Shubhaya LinkedIn's profile link in the description. So if you are someone who want to message him, you can text text him by clicking the link in the description. So this is the end of the interview, guys. I would like to thank again Sudan Shubhaya for having your valuable time. So you, ha- I know you have like a tight schedule. but uh, you have given us some of your valuable time once again thank you so much uh, for giving this uh, amazing opportunity to us that's not problem at all i mean you're pretty good at it i wish you all the luck and keep doing what were you are doing so this is the end of the interview guys so i hope you got some value from this interview so please share your opinions in the comment section and also in future i will do more these type of interviews So when I upload those interviews so if you want to be notified make sure you have hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications just by hitting that bell icon so this is your Joshua Kumlakar signing off